This is my really quick guide to the Akai APC40. So if you've been watching some of my recent videos, you will have seen that I use the Akai APC40 MIDI controller for life quite a lot. This is really a very useful tool that I've recently rediscovered after it sat on my shelf for a year or two. And in the comments of one of my videos, someone asked, hey, can you do a tutorial on this controller? So I thought, well, it is so easy to use that why not? It's not gonna be a very long tutorial. So in this tutorial, I will show you exactly how easy it is to use and how useful it is, especially for doing arrangements in Ableton Live and getting from a loop to an actual piece of music. So without further ado, here we go. So here we have an Ableton Live set with a loop that I've made earlier, and I'm going to use the APC40 to create an arrangement on the fly in real time. First, let me explain a little bit about the APC40. So what it is, it's a MIDI controller for life that replicates a mixer, as you can see, a mixer surface. And I'll get into what all the controls do. What it isn't is it's not a sequencing device. You cannot play notes on it. You cannot program notes with it. It is basically purely for controlling the mixer, starting and stopping clips, etc. So it's not like Ableton's push, which you can also use to sequence and play notes. This is a lot simpler and actually for me that's a plus because I like things simple. So let's get into the basic sections here. So this is the part where there are eight channels and a master channel. There's faders for every channel. There are the on off buttons here. The A, B selection for the crossfader, which I don't use a solo button and a record arm button. These buttons over here actually select the different tracks. And as you can see in live, there's a red triangle around the tracks that are selected, that are available, and the clips. And here are the different clip launching buttons. I only have one scene with clips here, and you can start and stop those, for instance, this kick, and use the stop button here, and this drone sound here. And that's basically the clip launching and stopping. Then with the scene buttons here, you start the whole scene, and this button stops all the clips, basically. Then there are these dials at the top here. So these have different functions. Right now they're set to panning. You can set them to sense with this button. And if you hold this button, you can select send A, B, and C. So I only have A and B here, but let's say I want to change B. You can do it like this and A like this. And then there's a user button. And now these are user assignable with the MIDI learn function in life. I mainly use them for sense. Then at the top right here, there's the transport section with control, a record button for recording in the arrangement view, and also a record button for recording in the session view. You can change the tempo, turn on the metronome or off, nudge the tempo forward or backward, which is useful in a DJ-like live setting. Adjust the tempo with this rotary dial here. And then there's the device control section. So eight dials here for controlling devices in the device view. You can actually switch between clip view and device view with this button here. Very useful. And then there's device on and off and device select here. So if I push these, it steps through the different devices. I can select them and I can turn them on and off with this, which is really useful. And then there are these eight dials which control the first eight parameters of any device. And there's the bank select where you can step through more parameters. Finally, there's the crossfader here, which selects the A and B crossfade. Again, I really don't uh, use that. And then these bank select buttons, they allow you to step through the different um, clips and tracks. It moves the red rectangle. And basically, that's it. That's basically the main functions of this device. As you can see, quite simple, quite self-explanatory. And that's why I really love using this, especially for creating arrangements. So let me get into an example here. I have a basic loop here going. I'll just turn on all the clips in the scene. And let's stop a few of these clips. I select the tracks with this. And as you can see, for instance, on this track, the filter is selected. And I can control that and the resonance and so on and so forth. 
So what I will show you now is how I create an arrangement on the fly. Okay, let's switch to the arrange view. So I have an empty arrangement here. And what I'll do is I'll record a minute or two of live clip launching and automation just to show you how I use this controller. So basically going from a bunch of clips in the session view to a mini arrangement, an actual piece of music with a start and an end. So record, here we go, three, two, one. there we have it, a short arrangement using the seven clips with some automation, a couple of breakdowns and things like that. And just a piece of music that I can listen back to later. And the great thing about this is that it actually took two minutes to create this two minute piece of music. So I can do this again for five or six minutes and then I'll actually have a five or six minute piece of music, a full length track. And of course that doesn't have to be the end of it, you can always work on it more, add stuff, remove stuff, redo the automation, etc, etc. But you get the idea. I think this is a great way of working and I highly recommend you check it out. You can do similar things with the Novation Launchpad products and of course with Ableton's Push, although it is quite a bit more complicated and expensive. So anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please give it a like if you enjoyed it and consider subscribing if you want to see more of this kind of content. And let me know in the comments what you think about using a controller like this, about all the other stuff that I talked about. I would love to know what you think about this stuff and interact with you guys. So if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one. Bye bye.